Okay, this is the uh, final video we're going to do uh, for airway management for the uh, MICU fellows. Well, we've, we've come to the, the final airway, the one you really hope you don't have to get to, and that is the surgical airway. Now, everything we've done till now, doing a good exam of the airway, uh, history and physical, looking for signs that there might be trouble, being good at masking, placing an LMA, using a fiber optic, using a combination of the glide scope plus a fiber optic. Everything we've done until now is done in hopes of preventing the need for going to a surgical airway. Because obviously a surgical airway is something you would prefer not to do. But when the day comes, heaven forbid, the day comes that you need to do it, you need to do it. And the idea is you say, I can't intubate, I can't ventilate, and I have to do this thing. Probably the hardest thing is to just steel yourself to this and to say, you know what, this is going to be messy, this is going to be ugly, I'm going to be uncomfortable doing this, but the choice here is death or severe injury. So when it boils down to that, you got to go for the gusto. So that's the first thing is, do everything you can to not get here, but once you've decided you're going to do it, go for it. Key element to remember. There is no such thing as an emergent tracheostomy. That's down low. That you got to worry about the thyroid. It's very deep, tough to get to. You don't have enough time. There is only an emergency cricothyrotomy. Cricothyrotomy, so between what? Between the thyroid cartilage and between the cricoid, the, uh, cricoid cartilage, cricothyroid membrane. It's shallow. Even in an obese person, it's shallow. And that's where you want to go. You can even palpate. You feel your own. Thyroid, cricoid, and right there. And that's what I'm palpating right here. Mentally, the way to approach this is as follows. You've put in lines. You've put in central lines. How many central lines you've put in? A million. You're putting in a central line is what you are. You're putting in a central line, but it happens to be full of air instead of blood. That's all it is. It's air instead of blood. We're going to poke through the cricothyroid membrane, and we're either going to place a device such as this, a crike kit, or if you don't have a crike kit, we're just going to grab a central line kit and use that. The idea is this person is going to die or have severe injury unless you do something. For whatever reason, we can't get in oxygen from above, so we have to go through the cricothyroid membrane. My favorite way to do this is just to say to someone, get me a central line kit. And I'll walk you through it, and then I'll show you. I'm going to use the needle that we already have in the central line kit. There's central line kits anywhere, certainly in the ICU. You place it. You draw air. You push your wire in, just like Seldinger technique. Now you make a little cut, and then you slide a small tube down it. That's a way to get an emergency cricothyrotomy. And let's go ahead and do it. But... I'm going to go ahead and open up the central line kit. Doesn't matter what kind. Obviously, I would have gloves on. And you're in a big hurry, so you say to someone else here, go ahead and prep this for me. And now I'll walk you through this. Thinking through this thing, I'm going to go till I get air. Then I'm going to stick a wire down it, just like a central line. Once the wire's in, all I have to do is make a little cut along it and then I can slide some kind of endotracheal tube down it. It doesn't have to be big, but as long as you can get some kind of tube in there, you should be in, in good shape. So I palpate. I go till I aspirate air. I've aspirated air. And see, the good news is you're going through motions you've gone through a hundred times before. You've done this so many times before. Now I'm going to put the wire in, just like for the central lines you've done, okay? Bingo. And then, look, everything's here. The blade is here. I'm just going to make a nick here. And you're going to have to go fast. And you're going to have to be a little generous with the nick. Okay? Because now what are you going to do? Now, sometimes they'll talk about people putting in a 14 gauge and hooking up a 3 cc's to do and all. And, and if you're trying to do that, you're going to be panicking. You're going to be like, eh. Whereas if you put a wire in and make a little nick, then at that point, just grab, you can even grab a child's endotracheal tube. You're just going to do this to try to oxygenate. I shove this baby in there. 
Again, this will be ugly. This will be ugly. But you see how it's just the same as if I were basically putting in a central line? Now I can hook up an ambu bag and I can at least oxygenate him. Now how long that, did that take? That didn't take very long, even though I had to go back and cut a little bit. And plus mentally, mentally, I was just doing what I usually do. Boom, air instead of blood. Wire, cut, shove something down there. All there is to it. Now, what's an alternative? Say they can't even get you a central line kit. Well, again, you palpate. And here we do, we have a little crite kit here. You palpate. You just get in there and make your cut. And you just shove like crazy. Ugh. Take this thing out, and there you've got it. It's worth practicing this in a simulation center a few times, just so that, goodness gracious, the day comes when you need it, you don't hesitate. Think of this as a, again, this is a central line that has air in the middle rather than blood. Stick, wire, shove the thing in. Or, if you don't have that around, palpate, make a nick, and shove this thing in there. Sometimes people are freaking out, oh my god, he'll never heal, never heal. If I pull this thing out, this, this hole will heal in about six weeks or so. And plus, you're doing this to save the person's life, so don't worry about the fact that it's going to be a little bit messy. All right, that's it for the I hope you never have to do it surgical airway, but good to know and good to have this uh, arrow in your quiver in case it should ever happen.